Okay, so I just got out of seeing The Grudge a few hours ago, and I was extremely excited for this. I watched the two Jill on the Curse movies, and I watched two uh, American Grudge remakes. I didn't go, I didn't rewatch the first Grudge remake because uh, I've seen that movie like twice before with Sarah Michelle Gellar in it and I haven't seen The Grudge 2 or 3 so I thought I'd just focus on the Grudge films that I haven't seen before and I had a lot of, I guess, I, I was excited to go into it. I wouldn't say The Grudge is like one of my most anticipated movies of this year but I, thought I was interested just it as a January release because January, it's, it, it has its ups and downs um, I thought January in recent years, I thought there's been some really great, solid releases in January. I think recent ones were, um, uh, Insidious, The Lost Kid, which also starred Lynn Shea. I thought she was amazing in that movie, and I think she's built quite a, um, a quite, a, quite a following for her, mainly in the Insidious franchise, and yeah, she's made other little, little roles and cameos in other horror projects as well and um another thing i didn't realize is this is not sam Raimi's first time producing a grudge film as i was watching the grudge 2 the other day um as the opening credits were coming up it said produced by sam Raimi. he also produced now I looked on his imdb and he also produced the first grudge as well which both of those movies were pg-13 and another reason why i was excited to see the grudge was because for an ma movie and I was excited for that. This is got this was going to be our first really bloody, really gory grudge film. Um so yeah, there were there were a few reasons for why I was excited for this. Now let's get into what I thought of the movie. Um so first off, this movie is not good and there is a whole lot of reasons why this movie failed. So I'll start off, usually in my reviews, I start off by talking about the positives and then move into the negatives. For this review, I'm going to start off with the negatives while the negatives are still fresh in my mind. So we'll talk about the negatives first. So the biggest negative for this movie is the characters. This movie falls flat. Like, there's, there's definitely character development towards these characters. It's just that it's not enough and it's just very boring these characters stories especially the first act it's very drawn out and it's just each character they kind of have the same issue like they've either lost a loved one they've either lost a father or a or a wife and there's this other family in the movie that has a newborn baby on the way and this movie's split up into three different timelines um in 2000 and six the movie starts out in and then it moves to 2004 and then 2005 and throughout the movie it uh it goes between these three timelines and in an hour and a half they have to connect all all these three timelines together and kind of explain all these mysteries that this movie is building like one of our in 2006 it was like this there's this crime scene going on there's this like one it was in the trailer you saw this like this body looks like it's been there for like years it's all kind of rotten there's the car is all old and yeah there's that crime scene uh, going on and yeah they're trying to find out like what they're trying to find out like what did this and it's in and the police are saying that there was like another person in the car with her this is not a normal crime scene obviously someone did this someone caused this and yeah there's this big mystery um behind all these uh through all these uh, timelines the characters yeah stay on the characters point for a minute um just these characters just i i did not i never got once intrigued or engaged in their story i mean i was never invested i i didn't believe any of the relationships that were going on throughout the movie. I just, I didn't, I, I didn't buy any of the characters. They didn't have enough character development for me to actually hook on to, to their characters and say, do you know what, this is a character I cheer for, that I want to cheer for throughout this movie. There was just, I just found them boring when they were on screen. It's just, they were honestly the most boring parts of the movie, which is quite often. And 
Speaking of that, um, as far as the grudge character does it go in this movie, she's in this. All of her scenes are in the trailer. If you've seen the both the official uh, teaser trailer and the Red Band trailer, you've technically seen all of her scenes. All of the best scenes of her, at least, are in the trailer. There's no surprise. And what they do with her in this movie, oh, that was one element. Um, but I was excited to see play out. Like, I was excited to see how they would actually bring the grudge character back into this movie. Because she's, like, she's an important part of the John films and the American remakes. It's, like, this curse that goes on. And, yeah, she's a big part of that, as much as the characters are. She also is. And, yeah, she's not in the movie a whole lot. She's maybe in there for maybe... Two to three minutes. Probably has like three minutes of screen time in this movie. And the rest of this movie is just characters standing around, talking, walking around a creepy house for an hour and a half. That's really... I just broke down this entire movie in those couple of seconds. That's honestly the entire movie. It's just characters walking around, walking through a creepy house. And there's a few jump scares along the way. I just broke down the entire movie for you. Really outside of that, there's really nothing else. Um, and yeah, it's, if this is a movie where the characters should have been believable, and it makes me question why they decided to do the whole three timelines. This movie should have just stuck with one family. It should not have just gone between these three timelines and tried to connect them all because they tried to make this big mystery like who is the grudge what is causing all this all these i guess uh, all these deaths around town they they, they they try to act all smart about the mystery but in the end the audience knows that it's the grudge so there's really no surprise about how these people die we know this curse kills people and this movie just thinks that they're that the way that they're building it, that they're building it to the big epic reveal that happens in the movie, is we we all know that it's the grudge the grudge caused this person to die. We know that. There's no surprise. So I don't see why the movie um, actually spent so much screen time actually building that mystery when the audience knows, especially if you've seen the John movies and you and you know what this curse is, it's there's no surprise. So yeah, I don't know why they went that direction of um, of building this big mystery of who of what caused these deaths. My next major negative with this movie is just the timeline. This movie does not need to have the whole 2006, 2004, 2005 timeline. It doesn't need to have three different timelines. What I think would have been better, and this is with the characters also, is if we just had this story built built with behind just focusing on one family, not multiple families, not multiple characters, not multiple people, just one family living together. Because this is a very short movie. It's like an, an hour and 46 minutes and when they have a timeline, like I said, I, I get they're trying to connect to the, um, the Juan, you know, the Grudge universe, um, but it just, this, this timeline, it just, it gets, you have to keep up with it, like, for the most part, I think I kept up with this timeline pretty well, but there's just so many points in the movie where I was just like, wait, which timeline are we in? Because once they kind of introduce, um, what year it is, it's, that's not really, that doesn't appear, so you have to kind of, you have to, you have to kind of know these characters in the time that the year is being introduced before it switches to another year. You have to kind of know these characters and then they will help you somehow, I guess, follow this story better. So, it just, it just, it got really confusing at a point. It's just like, wait, which year are we in? What's happening? Where is this family at? And, yeah, it's just... They, this movie just did not need to be that confusing to the point where it had three different timelines going on in the one movie. Just have like either one character or one family, that's it. We don't need three different timelines to make this big epic mystery. The audience 
already knows. We don't need it. We so that's why another very big negative is just the timeline. I just I didn't feel like it was it was necessary. Um, uh, okay, what else? Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I didn't like. Um, oh, the dialogue. That's nothing I have to bring up. The dialogue. There's some. Um, there's honestly a couple parts in this movie where I was just like, wait, what? Did you honestly just say that? Really cringy dialogue throughout this movie that literally just made me question the, the script here. And apparently the script thinks it's a lot smarter than its audience. They try to do this like this outstanding mystery like I've already said in the review. They they think the way they're building it with these three timelines, because that's to connect they have to kind of conclude each storyline, they have to conclude each uh, timeline that, that goes on. I think the first timeline that's actually finished, I think, is the uh, 2006, because I think the first big mystery that we find out is the um, person who was in the car crash um, at the beginning of the film. I think that's the first mystery that's actually, I think, uh, that's actually revealed to the audience. Um... I think that was in 2006, that was. So yeah, there's just, there's just so much going on. I just, I just don't think, yeah, this, the script just thinks it's a lot smarter than it is. And if this film is taking place in the grudgy universe, it's, haven't, audiences already know. I mean, they, they, these characters don't know what it is yet, which is fair, but at least try to do something new with the mystery. Don't just make it where it's just, it's so obvious where there's just no surprise. Like when these when the reveal happens to what's actually causing all these deaths, it's it, it's there's no surprise behind it because we know it's the grudge. And I that's uh, that's beyond the characters. That's the biggest negative. Is it's just is is just there's no mystery for the for the movie because we know what's causing this um and this film is technically it's a reboot sequel in a way i mean they're trying to reboot this for a new audience but sometimes it's a sequel because it exists in the grudge universe another point is that the movie is just not fun it's not even engaging because like i said the mystery it's so obvious by like five ten minutes into this movie you know what's causing it if, if they had made more of a compelling story for these characters i would have cared for them i, I would have but it's just this there's there's really no main character in this movie because each timeline has a main character that you're focusing on so you really don't have a main character here um because each timeline has a main character that it's focusing on um but yeah, the, yeah, these characters, um, the character, the best character development that we get in this movie is the characters have either lost a loved one, if, if, if that's a father or a daughter, and another family has a newborn baby on the way that, uh, that they're just trying to, I guess, get everything sorted, um, that they're just trying to turn their lives around and just trying to, do what's best for the baby here. I'll just move on to the um, positive because I've technically ranted on this movie enough. So there are a few redeeming qualities for this movie. So I'll talk a bit about them. Um, so first off, Lynn Shay. She is easily the best performance out of everyone in this movie. Her, she holds the best performance in this movie and I think uh, she was the most watchable performance out of everyone I mean outside of her there were some okay performances there was a uh, John Cho I thought he was pretty good in the movie but yeah Lin Shay was the best um in it, she was the best and most watchable role because you can tell that she did the best everybody else just feels like they're, the, uh, I feel like everybody's trying their best but it just comes off as the as they're just sleepwalking through the entire thing. Lynn Shay has easily the best performance in this movie. She has the most watchable performance in this movie. And she has a really, really neat character in this movie, which I really liked. 
and this is a MA uh, grudge movie, so there's obviously going to be lots of blood and gore. Let's talk about that. The reason why I was excited to watch this movie was due to it being an MA uh, film, because I think up until now, there's, there's been um, all the grudge films have been PG 13. All the American remakes have been PG 13. This is our first real hardcore MA grudge film. So as far as the blood and gore goes in this movie, I thought the movie does not shy away from its gore. There's some really gory moments in this movie for sure. There's this in the trailway scene when she, she's cutting off her fingers. That was a really brutal um, on-screen uh, gory moment. Um, and then there's a few other scenes that are just really rough to watch. And uh, yeah, they, they didn't shy away on it on any of the deaths that happen in this movie. They show it to its full ability. Um, for an MA movie, um, I, I could have maybe gone for a bit more. I feel like I, I feel like I'm a bit of a dick by saying that, but I feel like there could be more gore in this movie than is presented. But the gore that we do get, they don't shy away at all. They go full on blood and guts, gore all over the screen when it's uh, shown. Um, but, yeah, it's, and the, um, makeup design that throughout the film I thought was really good, the, uh, I thought the, um, uh, the jump scares, I'll talk a bit about them. Obviously, this is a January movie, it's going to have jump scares, that's every horror movie nowadays, there's always jump scares. Let's talk about the jump scares. Uh, the jump scares in this are, I'll say this. They're not well executed. I was never scared once. I was just kind of sitting in my cell. I don't think the audience was scared at all. These jump scares didn't they they didn't work well. They were not executed well. But I will say this. These scares were directed well. There were some really well directed and crafted jump scare scenes. There were a few that, that landed flat, but a large majority of the jump scares I will say um, were were directed really well. They weren't executed well, but they were directed well. I could tell the director. He, I could tell he had an he had an idea and he wanted to execute it, but the execution in the end just does not work. It's um, there's one scene that she had a good amount of tension, and there's this one scene where this uh, character is um, kind of walking just for like. A dark hallway and she has, all she has is a flashlight and um, it's pitch black and that, that scene actually had a pretty good amount of tension building before the actual scare happened. So yeah there's some well directed jump scares, there's some good tension in a few jump scares, one in particular was like said, set um, at night, it was pitch black, um, it was like, it was in this office type environment and she had a flashlight and, yeah, I thought that was a scene that, that it went on for probably a whole minute to two minutes and it, it had a good amount of tension in it because you feel like every corner is just going to have something waiting and then it doesn't, it just keeps on building and building, I really, I really uh, liked that scene in the movie, it had good tension, um, but yeah, the jump scares, um, yeah, I was not really that impressed by these, uh, these are generic, generic jump scares in the end, um, that, yeah, that they just aren't scary, um, it's, I think I may have, I was startled in one scene, I was, I jumped a little bit in one scene, but that was really about it, and it was just, because there was a loud noise and the sound design in the cinema was was pretty good as well it kind of it, it echoed from like one side of the cinema to the other side and I thought that was a um, really, I thought that was really cool so good job uh, the sound crew at the cinema the sound design sounded good um, and that's technically all I can really say I didn't really enjoy this movie all that much um 
it's if, if this movie I would have scared me or at least would have at least let me feel some emotion for these characters or was this at least made me feel um like scared which this movie never did I may have liked the movie more but the scares were not well executed in the end so yeah um and I never, I, I didn't go into the movie expecting, you know, like this groundbreaking character building movie. I never, I did not go in expecting that at all. I just wanted to have a fun night at the movies watching a horror. But at the same time, I can't just switch my brain off and go, okay, I'm now watching a good horror movie. I actually have to analyse movies as I'm watching them because I, because I'm a movie critic on YouTube, so... Yeah, I I have I can't just shut my my brain off and just enjoy a movie. I have to analyze like you know is the direction good? Is the is the character development uh, good? Are the scares well? Are the scale are the scares well earned? And does yeah all of that? I have to kind of look into detail and all of that as I watch a movie. You know because if I just sit here and say uh, the grudge was boring because we didn't see the grudge a whole lot review ends. It's just, yeah, there's no point to backing up that, so I just have to kind of look, so, yeah. I was disappointed by this movie, um, like, I was extremely, I was really excited to see what they actually did with the grudge character, like, how were they going to, I guess, bring her back? Like, since, I think, 2009, I think that's when the grudge free, and we haven't had a grudge movie since the third instalment of the grudge in the American, uh, the American remake. Uh, third instalment. We haven't had a grudge film since I think it was 2009. I was curious to see how they were actually going to bring her back into this story after all this time. So yeah, I was disappointed by that. I mean, if maybe we saw more screen time of her. I mean, I could see what this movie was trying to do from the start. This movie was trying to, to do what Drew on the Curse did and Drew on the Grudge, where it was where it's not an exciting movie, it's not It's not supposed to be exciting, it's supposed to be atmospheric, it's supposed to get under your skin like the genre film which is. It's supposed to be a slow burn movie building to this one big epic, I guess, reveal, which this movie does. And yeah, I could see what I was trying to do, I was trying to go for the slow burn feel that the Juan films had. So I could see what you were trying to do there with the first act, is you're trying to just kind of introduce everything slowly. Just like the Juan films, they just kind of build it over um, um, a period of this runtime. So yeah, I could see what you were trying to do. I could see that you took um, inspiration, influence from the Juan films. Um, but yeah, in the end, guys, I can't recommend that you see this movie. Um, there's Underwater, that came out. I haven't seen that myself, but I'm sure that would be a lot better movie than this, so I'd probably say, yeah, go support Underwater, or, or if not, probably yeah, save your money for another movie, or go see Bad Boys for Life. It's There's plenty of other good movies out at the moment. Yeah, just, yeah, don't really waste your money on this movie, so yeah, they're my thoughts on the grudge 2020 yeah anyways uh let me know down in the comments if you've seen the grudge 2020 let me know what you guys for the movie did you like it did you think it was kind of mad or did you really not like this movie let me know all, all your thoughts and comments down in the comment section down below so anyways guys i hope you have a good rest of your night and i'll see you in the next video